Hey, welcome back to the channel. I wasn't planning on doing a video on this, but I was having a conversation with some of my friends over at the Wolfpack, discord.gg slash wolfpack1, and we were talking about torque and TGT limiting. It got me thinking about trying to see if I could get the helicopter to hit a torque limit without hitting a TGT limit, as we did in a video on performance. So as you can see here, I've loaded up the helicopter with four full external tanks and full internals as well. It weighs well over 23,000 pounds, and we're going to take it flying to see how it performs. So we'll taxi out here to the runway, because there's no way that we'll be able to do a normal takeoff. We're going to do a rolling takeoff in order to get through ETL and make the main rotor more efficient. I've set the weather conditions to very cold, negative 12 degrees Celsius, with high barometric pressure, and we're at Batumi, which is at sea level. You can see here that I can actually get the aircraft off the ground in a hover, but I'm pulling nearly 100% torque to do so, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a rolling takeoff. As I get the aircraft lined up with the centerline, I'll talk about the procedure. First, we'll begin pulling in torque and moving the cyclic forward to begin moving. Once the tail comes off the ground, I'll hold the aircraft in a level attitude while we continue to accelerate down the runway. Once the aircraft comes off the ground, I'll put the aircraft into aerodynamic trim and continue straight ahead in a climb. From there, it's a normal traffic pattern. Here we go. So I begin by pulling in collective and pushing the cyclic forward to bring the tail up and put the aircraft in a level attitude. I probably should have been in transition mode from the start, but that's okay. We begin to accelerate forward and we start getting pretty light on the wheels pretty quickly and actually come off the ground around 30 knots or so. From there, we're just accelerating and climbing. You can see here I'm pulling 96% torque. We're continuing to accelerate. We're climbing at about 250 feet a minute. So performance margins are going to be slim for this. For this pattern, we'll make our turns to the left. And since we know that we're going to be power limited, We'll go ahead and plan on doing a roll-on landing at the end. We'll make that approach nice and shallow, very much like an airplane landing. We'll continuously be slowing down on final in order to touch down at around 40 knots. So I'm looking at the fuel page here. With four external tanks, I wanted to see if they were defaulted to the on position or not. Turns out they're not, which I believe is accurate. I believe you have to turn them on manually once you're ready to get the fuel out of them. All right, here we are in the downwind. I'm trying to hold about 700 feet, 110 knots. It's taken almost 100% power to do that. And as for the rest of the pattern itself, we're really just out here flying a normal pattern, enjoying the view, looking around, making sure, you know, taking a second to think about what we're gonna do next and how this roll-on landing is gonna go. Since we're going to be doing a roll-on landing, we'll extend the downwind out just a little bit before we turn our base leg. Got to make sure we have a nice, long final so that we can uh, get down at a nice shallow angle. I 
I didn't do a very good job of getting slowed down here on the base leg, but we'll go ahead and take care of that on the final. As we roll out on final, I'm lining up my ground track with the runway using the flight path vector to help me line up with my intended point of landing. You can see we're doing 100 knots right now, but we're slowing, gradually bringing the speed back, gradually applying a little bit more aft cyclic to bring the speed back. And as we increase the aft cyclic, we're also increasing the collective, increasing the left pedal. And getting a little bit shallow here at the end, managed to save it. Pulled in a little more power, ended up touching down just about right on the numbers. Not too terrible. Now, let's see some torque limits. Two words you never want to hear in aviation. Watch this. Rotor RPM low. Rotor RPM low. Take a look at that engine page Rotor if you can. RPM low. Rotor RPM low. See, I'm pulling in all the torque I had, and uh, we were not TGT limited at all. We only hit our torque limits. We'll try it again here. So what's happening here? Well, as I pull the collective all the way up, the aircraft wants to give me that power. The pitch of the rotor blades, though, is going to an extreme angle, so much so that they're actually slowing down, which caused us to lose lift and caused us to descend at a rapid rate. At the same time, the tail rotor was unable to provide enough thrust to counter the torque to remain pointed in a single direction even with full pedal deflection. We'll try it one last time. Rotor RPM low. Rotor RPM low. Rotor RPM low. And there we were, drooping rotor the rotor RPM again. High. So that was pretty interesting that we were able to put our, uh, exceed our torque limits, but uh, not actually hit TGT limiting. Anyway, we're going to have uh, one last bit of bonus footage here. I'm going to attempt an auto rotation. We'll speed things up to get around the pattern, but this is the first time I've tried to do one in this aircraft. It's definitely not pretty, but I'll let you watch. So we're going to start the maneuver at 1,000 feet and 100 knots. We'll smoothly lower the collective, simultaneously applying right pedal, and let the aircraft begin descending. We will increase the collective as necessary to maintain the rotor within limits. We'll look for that 90 knot, 100 knot attitude somewhere in there. And at 250 feet, We'll begin our deceleration as the aircraft begins to fall through. We'll pull our initial. We'll level the aircraft and then cushion for the landing. We're about to hit our entry point here, so let's see what happens. Here we go. Rotor RPM high. Rotor RPM high. So I was having a hard time keeping the nose up. And so I was working on that, rotor RPM and then the rotor RPM rotor starts RPM doing crazy things, so I'm messing with rotor the collective, RPM trying to work that out. Rotor RPM and as we get down here to rotor 250 RPM feet, rotor RPM low. you see rotor from the RPM control low. indicator that I'm yanking way rotor back RPM on low. the cyclic, but nothing rotor was RPM happening. Low. And uh, I attempted low. to cushion there at the rotor end, RPM but rotor there RPM was low. just 
not enough Rotor left RPM to cushion low. that much of the fall. So, anyway, that's an auto rotation. I actually even had the uh, the power levers all the way back, which is why the power kicked off. Would we have survived? Probably. Would it have uh, broken the aircraft pretty good? Yeah, probably. But hey, we're alive, right? So, anyway, just wanted to say thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the support that the channel's gotten, and we'll see you next time.